Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today we're gonna look at how to install MongoDB from the tarball on an Ubuntu or any Debian based system pretty much. Um, uh, I'd like to put it out there first that uh, I have good amount of experience with MySQL but this is really the first time I'm gonna be working with MongoDB because my one of my new projects it, it works and it demands uh, MongoDB clusters so that's why I was trying to get into it and since it's weekends I don't really have much to do I decided to make a video out of it you know just in case it, it, it helps others so the goal of the video is to install MongoDB using the tarball that we'll get from MongoDB's official website now there are plenty of reasons we are not just using you know the app get way to install it because uh, first of all it doesn't let you fully control the environment I mean it, it does but in case somebody just runs an app get update one night and you end up having a lot of your components upgraded which you didn't want to begin with that's a problem and yeah it also prevents accidental updates so basically just to have more control over how your your environment is built it's always advised to install everything yourself so uh, obviously I'm not gonna get into uh, a production environment right now I'm just gonna install it on a virtual machine uh, so I'm using Wagon for that now if you don't know what that is I'm pretty sure you'll find a lot of documents about it on Google or YouTube or any other place so I'm gonna log into the server uh, where we're gonna install it now this is a fresh Ubuntu 14.04 server uh, okay there we go it's a Ubuntu 14 server uh, I'm sticking to 14 because that we, that's what we use in, in the prod environment I'm pretty sure uh, you guys will be using like version 16 or 18 uh, but the version number is irrelevant here because we're gonna use the, the tarball itself and not relying on the app of the operating system so as long as you are on, on a Debian flavor this should work for you uh, so just for the since it's a demo we're trying to install it together I'm not really worried about the paths or where we're gonna install it or you know all of those things so I'll basically uh, just made a directory called databases or database uh, let's see the into that now here's the file uh, the tar tarball that I've downloaded from MongoDB's website before I started the video because I've noticed that it just wouldn't download sometimes for some reason so I didn't want to have to pause and then you know look for the URL then so if you go to MongoDB website I'm pretty sure you'll find it and yeah so that's where I downloaded this from so the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm sorry it's hard to talk and type at the same time because I'm not really used to creating videos in fact this is like the first video I'm, I'm creating so I'm pretty sure it's, it, there are no effects, there are no special music or anything, but it, you know, just in case you want to learn something. So, okay, there we go. All right. So now we are in the in the directory of MongoDB, and these are the files that comes by default. Now this is you know the licensing, the notices, the README, and binaries is where you'll find all the important Mongo related files which would which the system would install for you if you if you were to use apt get uh, but since we're, we're doing it ourselves uh, we're gonna just use the binaries and set everything up All right so, so okay uh, alright and now that we have the binary uh, before we I mean this is the binary that we're gonna run in order to you know launch the database server but before we can do that we obviously need a config file so uh, I mean you if you have any certain location for the config file you can put it anywhere you want but just for the sake of the demo I'm gonna keep it into the same directory as uh, where I've downloaded uh, rather extracted the MongoDB uh, files so I'm gonna uh, make a file called mongod.conf now this is a config file that I wrote before I started creating the video so I'm just gonna paste it here if you wanna take a quick look it says the storage now this is where MongoDB will actually store the databases the actual files of the databases so this is gonna be the same directory where I downloaded or extracted the MongoDB files and there would be a new DIR called data in it 
and then I have the system logs where MongoDB would, would store the logs and then I have network interfaces where I want to bind it to the local port the, the standard default port is 27017 so that's where I'm going to bind it to security you know since I'm not an expert in MongoDB I'm just going to comment it comment it out right now and we'll enable it once we're done starting and probably like you know getting the database up and running and now that we have the config in place we want to one second okay now that we have the config in place we can basically just run the binary uh, to start the Mongo database but before we can do that I mean obviously as you can see uh, bin is where all the files are but you don't want to like have the full path in all of your uh, commands in order to execute this so we're gonna export the path to our bash rc file and so the next time we log in we don't really have to go all the way to mongo instead we can just go mongo or mongod and it will know where to find it so i'm gonna edit my bash rc file go to the bottom and i'm just gonna add a new line which says export path and path to my binary location which is this so I'll, I'll paste it in the description uh, if you can't really read it properly once I exported that I'm just gonna go source bash rc so that my bash file is reloaded I don't really have to close the terminal and start it again I just reloaded the bash file so for example if I go mongo see it failed because we were not configured it but it knows where to find mongo that was the whole reason to export the, the environment variable into the bash rc file so once we've done that we can basically just go and start it ourselves so the command for that will be there's uh, also what we want to do is we want to make the database dir because if you remember uh, in the config file right mongod.conf we have the db path which we've not created yet which is the data and also we have to create the logs directory so we go make dir data and logs so now we have data as well as logs here okay now if we were to go mongo let's say i'm just going to paste it for you guys but we don't really have to go to bin because it, it's exported already and we can have we can specify the db path which is home wagrant databases mongodb da uh, database data right and also we want to uh, start it using the config file that we created so we'll link it to config which is in home wagrant uh, databases mongo uh, mongod.conf no, which is this file that we created and once we start it hopefully this should start it so I think it started so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab and we'll log in to the same server just to make sure it's running right because if I if I control C here it's going to co close the process and the server would not be uh, operational anymore so if I go let's say that's that uh, P L N T U that would show us that there is something running on 2701 and the program name is mongod which is running on the process id of 2311 if you also wanted to check by the port uh, i guess you can do netstat ANP grab i and the port is 270017 so that would show you it's running mongo and the sockets are mongo so we're pretty sure the database is running it's up and running it's fine if i go mongo you see we're locked in right so uh, we are connected to uh, test database right now so if we go show dbs which is the command to list the databases it just says local because we have no databases in there yet but before we get to that the first thing we want to do is obviously you don't want to run this command every time you want to start the server you want something to take care of this for you now there are two options you can either create a system d file which is i mean i don't really want to get into that but it's basically a file created by every application that's installed in your machine to make sure the application starts and if it crashes it restarts it's so when you install mongodb using apt-get it also create it also creates a system file 
which is I believe in CD Etsy system D uh, system yeah so this is where you'll find so for example there's SSH here so this is the file response it's a it's a sim linked file but still this is the file responsible to make sure the SSH serving service keeps running but if you don't want to mess with that there's really an easy alternative it's called supervisor which basically it's a program that ensures any particular command that you want to keep running it, it will do that for you so it might be your Mongo application, it might be some random Python application, or anything basically that you work with, but you need it to be online all the time, Supervisor will do that for you. So to install Supervisor, we can simply go install Supervisor. Now before you go, why don't you install Supervisor using the toggle? Well, I don't really care about the version of the Supervisor because it's not really my production data is not really dependent on the supervisor so even if that updates or when I, I I don't really care about that as long as it keeps my apps running so I don't really need to go through the toggle for that so once the supervisor is installed uh, the supervisor files I mean you can read more about it on their website and all of that but since this is not a supervisor video I'm not really gonna go into the detail of how it works so you can go to Etsy supervisor where you'll find all the config files so this is where you configure the supervisor the way you want it to work but we don't really want to do that so all the applications you want supervisor to keep running for you the config files can be put into here so I'm gonna create a file and call it mongo.conf and we're gonna paste the supervisor uh, script here which I've created before I started the video so just to run over this, it's a name of the program that I'm running. Now this is a, an arbitrary name, this could be anything that you want. The command that I'm running, now if you pay attention to this, it's going to the MongoDB directory to bin to MongoD and running the same command that we ran ourselves uh, just a moment ago manually. But I think I changed the database names before, so let me just quickly fix that. So DB path database data db it's just the data in our case and the config is proper right and then I'm exporting the environment path that we did manually to the bash RC <coughs> so environment path export my mongodb binary directory so it knows where to run and then you can assign a user which is uh, which is uh, owner of the of the mongodb process here and while we are at it, might as well add the group of Wayfront. So it knows exactly which user is responsible and owner of this process. So this is where it gets interesting, right? It says auto start, true. It says auto restart in case of crashes, true. And then it has the log files of itself. So for example, if it failed to uh, start the application for some reason and you want to know why, you can find the logs here. If you remember, we created the logs directory into the MongoDB extracted files, so that's where it's going to print it. So once you have this in place, we can. Oh wow, I didn't sudo it right. I'm so fucking dumb. Uh, all right. So I guess I'm going to copy from here. Exit. Okay, and I'm going to sudo in mongo.conf. I'm going to add those things and I'm gonna re-add the first two lines that I'm missing from here so we have until environment so anything before environment has to be added so we're gonna go above the line and paste it and edit the data directory again uh, one second uh, data db to just data and the config file, yeah, that seems proper. Yeah, we say that, and uh, in order, since it's a new file, it's a new supervisor job, we're gonna have supervisor CTL, which is the control tool of the CT, uh, the supervisor, reread the, the configuration, which is a new file. So now it says there is a new application, local Mongo available. So we're gonna go sudo supervisor reload, and it's gonna restart the supervisor, and if we go to status, it's going to say local Mongo starting. Right? If we try that again, it says local Mongo running. 
So now you don't really have to use the Mongo command yourself anymore. Supervisor will do that for you. So if we try the port again, right? Uh, 27017, was it? Yeah. So you see the Mongo is already running. So that's how you install Mongo using a tarball yourself. Now, once you've installed it, uh, do you know that we've not yet enabled the, the authentication of any sort on this? This is just a plain database server. So the next steps for you would be to create an admin user, uh, enable the authentication, create databases and users as you like. And I think I'll cover that in some other video as we progress. So yeah, this is my first video. Uh, just let me know what you think of it. And yeah, thanks for your time. I'll see you.